we want to determine the critical numbers for the given rational function. If f of x is defined at x equals c, and f prime of c equals zero, or f prime of c is undefined, then x equals c is a critical number. So we find the critical numbers by determining where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined, but we do need to make sure that the function is defined at x equals c. If it's not, we don't include x equals c as a critical number. And we call the point c comma f of c a critical point. The reason we care about critical points or critical numbers is that if f of x has a relative extrema, then they will occur at critical points. This does not mean a function will always have a relative extrema at critical points. So let's begin by determining the domain of the given function, and because we have a rational function, we will factor the denominator. If it does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors. The factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of one that add to two are one and one, giving us two factors of x plus one. We can write the given function as the quantity x plus three divided by the square of the quantity x plus one. From here, we know division by zero is undefined, and therefore the only restriction on the domain is the quantity x plus one can't equal zero. So if the quantity x plus one can't equal zero, if we solve for x here, we have x can't equal negative one, which means the domain is all real numbers except x equals negative one, or we can say the domain is all real numbers where x doesn't equal negative one. Using interval notation, this would be the open interval from negative infinity to negative one union, open interval from negative one to infinity. So now we know x equals negative one can't be a critical number because it's not in the domain of the function. The next step is to find the derivative using the quotient rule. So f prime of x would have a denominator that is the square of the denominator of the original function, and we can use any form of the function for f of x. Let's go ahead and use the given form. So we would have the square of the quantity x squared plus two x plus one in the denominator of the derivative, and the numerator is going to be the denominator of the quantity x squared plus two x plus one times the derivative of the numerator, which is the derivative of the quantity x plus three, and then minus the numerator of x plus three times the derivative of the denominator, which is the derivative of x squared plus two x plus one with respect to x. And now to determine the derivatives, we have f prime of x, equals, now working in the denominator, we know the quantity x squared plus two x plus one is really the square of x plus one, and therefore the denominator is the square of the square of x plus one, which would be four factors of x plus one. So let's write the denominator as the quantity x plus one to the fourth. In the numerator, we have the quantity x squared plus two x plus one times the derivative of x plus three, which is just one, and then minus the quantity x plus three times the derivative of x squared plus two x plus one with respect to x, which is two x plus two. And now let's simplify the numerator. We have the quantity x squared plus two x plus one and then we're going to subtract the product of the two binomials, where we have x times two x, which is two x squared, and then we subtract, and then we have x times two, which is two x, and then we subtract, and then we have three times two x, which is six x, and then we subtract, and then we have three times two, which is six, and then we subtract. Next, we will combine the like terms in the numerator. We have f prime of x is equal to in the numerator, we have x squared minus two x squared, which is negative x squared. And then we have two x minus two x minus six x, which is minus six x. And then we have one minus six, which is negative five, giving us minus five, all over the fourth power of x plus one. 
Now that we have our derivative function, let's rewrite it above and then determine where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So first we know division by zero is undefined and therefore the derivative is undefined when x plus one equals zero. So if we set x plus one equal to zero and solve, notice how we get x equals negative one, but we know x equals negative one is not in the domain and therefore x equals negative one cannot be a critical number. So we will go ahead and eliminate x equals negative one. Next, any rational expression is equal to zero. When the numerator is equal to zero, and the denominator is non-zero. So to determine where the derivative is equal to zero, we will set the numerator of negative x squared minus six x minus five equal to zero and solve. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative one and write the equation as x squared plus six x plus five equals zero. So we can then factor it with a positive leading term. So this will factor into two binomial factors the factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of positive five that add to positive six are positive five and positive one, giving us a factor of x plus five and a factor of x plus one. The product is equal to zero when x plus five equals zero, or when x plus one equals zero. Solving for x, we have x equals negative five, or x equals negative one. And again, we know x equals negative one cannot be a critical number because it's not in the domain of the function and therefore we eliminate x equals negative one as a critical number and f of x only has one critical number and that is x equals negative five. And again, the reason we care about critical numbers is that if f of x does have any relative extrema, they will occur at critical numbers. So let's go ahead and analyze the function at x equals negative five. Looking at the graph on the left, notice the point on the function where x equals negative five does not appear to be a relative extrema. And that can be the case because remember, just because we have a critical number does not indicate we will always have a relative extrema. But if we do have a relative extrema, it will occur at a critical number. In this case, notice how if we zoom in on the function around x equals negative five, which I've done here on the right, we can see at x equals negative five, we do have a low point on the graph of the function, and therefore, we do have a relative minimum at x equals negative five. I hope you found this helpful.